Roy Waller's alleged rape spree started back in 1991 in Rohnert Park. He's accused of continuing the crimes in Vallejo, Martinez, Davis, and as far north as Chico. Investigators say he committed his last two crimes in 2006 in the Sacramento area. We have team coverage. KPI X5's Dahl Lynn is live at UC Berkeley, where the 58-year-old suspect has been working almost since the spree began. But we start with Julie Watts. She's live in Benicia, where Roy Waller lived. Julie? Yeah, Liz, you know, it's actually National Forensic Science Week, which is fitting in this case. Just months after the arrest of a suspect in the Golden State Killer case, investigators have once again used genealogy DNA to arrest a serial rapist that terrorized Northern California for years. In this quiet Venetian neighborhood, the only house behind a white picket fence, lived the man who investigators say violently raped and robbed at least 10 victims in six Northern California counties over the course of 15 years. Police say 58-year-old Roy Waller is the NorCal rapist. His alleged crime spree began in Rohnert Park in 1991 and continued victimizing women in Davis, Chico, Woodland, and Sacramento. Those people that you least expect that, you know, sometimes you just never know. Neighbors say Waller lived here with his wife and like his home was unassuming. From a distance, he seemed normal. I mean, he was cutting down the trees and pruning and, and they were laughing, I think. But in a joint press conference today, investigators from across Northern California recounted tales of terror. The suspect in this case was a real life boogeyman who crept into his victims' homes under the cover of darkness and attacked them when they were most vulnerable. He allegedly bound and sexually assaulted his victim before ransacking their homes, sometimes forcing them to withdraw money from the ATM. In one notable case, he even posed as a trick-or-treater before attacking his victim in Martinez on Halloween, later calling to apologize. Investigators have gathered plenty of evidence over the years. Police released this ATM video of the suspect wearing a mask. A neighbor's surveillance camera captured video of his car following another attack. In 2006, they released this sketch of the suspect after a victim caught a glimpse of his face. And for decades, investigators have been collecting DNA. But with no known matches, it wasn't much help. Until recent advances in genealogy DNA changed everything. The DNA is the silent witness to the truth. Using the same genetic genealogy website used to catch the Golden State Killer, investigators recently uploaded the NorCal rapist DNA. Like with the Golden State Killer, it allowed them to compile a family tree of relatives with common genes and track it back to their suspect, in this case, in just 10 days. Between science and passionate police work, the answer that many have waited so long has come to us. Waller is set to be arraigned on Monday. He's currently being held without bail. And Liz, he does face life in prison. Yeah, Julie, you mentioned investigators found Waller through a genealogy website. Does that mean that he submitted his own DNA? Well, they're not providing a lot of details about that just yet. The investigation is ongoing. But I can tell you it wouldn't really matter whether or not he submitted his own DNA to a genealogy website or an ancestry site for that matter. If anyone in his family, any relative submitted their DNA, it could be tracked back to him. All right. Liz. Julie Watts, thank you. News of the arrest came as a shock to students and staff at UC Berkeley, where Waller has been working for decades. KPIX 5 reporter Da Lin continues our coverage with reaction from campus. Da? Liz, a big surprise indeed. The campus sent out this email to everyone on campus alerting them about the arrest. For years, Waller worked on the third floor of this building here. His job title? safety specialist in charge with keeping people safe, yet he's accused of attacking a number of women. So it's really an unfortunate irony. I mean, they hide in plain sight. You never really know like what someone is capable of. For 26 years, Roy Waller worked for UC Berkeley's Environment, Health and Safety Office. Sacramento police arrested him yesterday as he arrived for work. It appears the university has already removed his nameplate from his office. His middle name is Charles. That's him? That I used to see walk around. I, I'm almost positive he drove a truck. Oh, I see. He was very quiet. Very quiet. He didn't, I mean, talk to us ever. Waller's co-workers and many university employees were instructed not to speak to the media. But two longtime workers off camera say it's scary. We have chat here at work and I'm talking from 
one side of campus to the other side, like, can you believe this? Oh my God, look at this. Do you know who this is? I mean, we are just shocked that this was somebody in our building. UC Berkeley declined an interview and released a statement saying they started fingerprinting job applicants in 2004. Waller was hired in 1992. As a safety specialist, the university says Waller managed programs to ensure safety and training regarding the use of equipment and machinery. The fact that you can't trust what the university, like who they're employing or the people that are responsible with our safety is very disheartening. The cases Waller are accused of did not occur within the campus community. But campus police are reviewing any open sexual assault cases to see if any might be related. The university says Waller is on investigative leave from his work. Back to you, Liz. All right, Doth, thank you. Roy Waller is due to make his first court appearance in Sacramento on Monday. Stay with KPIX5 and KPIX.com for continuing coverage of this case.